Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. We are tenure-track faculty members in the sciences, working at a primarily undergraduate university in California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. I'm Ruth. And I'm Claire. And today we're talking about hell yeah or no. But first, Ruth, how was your week? My week was awesome. I am... Um, nice. Yeah, I was, it was like, okay, so I feel very strongly about West Side Story. It's okay. It's a very dear place in my heart. Excellent. And I saw there was a new trailer this week for the new West Side Story Ooh. that's coming out in December. And it like literally gave me chills. I was Ooh. like, so, it just looks so great. And then... I kind of got sort of drawn all the way back down and I'm watching the old West Side Story. Obviously, at the moment, because I'm an old lady, I can only watch things in like 30 minute bursts before I have to go to bed. <laughs> so I'm watching it serialized over a few nights. But that sounds awesome. I've also been playing all of the songs for the kids and <clears throat> actually spent some time derailing them from their schoolwork, showing them some videos from the original movie. How fun. That I saw growing up and it's so good and so relevant. Like, it's so weird. Did I, I think I told you guys, or you guys, but you and Ralph, that I read The Outsiders a while ago. Uh-huh. And I was so, like, w with the exception of a couple of slang words, it mm -hmm. really could be written about today. You uh -huh. know, like, so it's just mm -hmm. sort of so interesting that we kind of think we've invented all of our current problems that we have. And really, they've totally. been going on for quite some time. And it's just such a good, I love West Side Story. That sounds awesome. I didn't know there was a new one coming out. I'll have oh, to man, look for that. I'm to watch the trailer. I also yes, I got I to will. see it live, like the live stage production in Dublin when I was a kid. Oh, wow. And oh my God, the gunshot at the end scared me. Like, it just was so loud and shocking. And it was a very profound experience for sure. Wow. So You're inspiring me to story. pull it out. That yeah, sounds awesome. Good stuff. But how was your week? My week's been good. I've been doing a puzzle, like a oh, jigsaw puzzle. Oh, love it. Which I, it's just so relaxing. Periodically, I'm like, I just want to do a puzzle. And so we bought one. I have it on this nice table. And I love that it's just sitting there, matching colors, matching shapes. You know, at any moment, you could stand up. You're deciding to sit there the whole time you're there. And um, just the fact that there's not really any purpose aside from assembling it is really relaxing, you know? So that I'm enjoying that. So, yeah, I, I love a good puzzle. Um, I need to get like, have you ever heard of those mats that you can get that you can roll up that keep oh, everything? Yes. I had one. My mom made one when I was a kid. So how does it stop all the pieces falling well, asunder the one, as you roll it up? Well, they kind of, they, yeah. So the way it worked, we had like a, a tube of cardboard and then a felt mat that we put the puzzle on and then you rolled it up um, so, yeah, I mean, it did, like, the puzzle pieces all stayed in the same spot relative to each other. But, the, yeah, when you unrolled it, you kind of need to flatten it out Yeah, again. it's not, but it's but not it wasn't total like, chaos. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. total chaos. It was just, a, yeah. Mm -hmm. We, because I had a puzzle on the go, and then the cats menaced the puzzle during the <laughs> night, and then we never retrieved the puzzle pieces. So it was yeah, like... Yeah, cats yeah, yeah. don't go well with puzzles. No, they do not. <laughs> so, I actually just read an article that was talking all about... Um, people's sort of state of burnout at the moment uh -huh. and they had the word it was languishing oh and I think it was a New York Times thing but it was about sort of somewhere in like not quite depression but not quite fully mm -hmm. in your so it's like this languishing thing and they talked about the kind of cure or one of the things you can do is getting into a flow mindset but mm. that's like totally what you're describing when totally. you just kind of get into that like where is yeah. that other shade of blue that's exactly like this? Uh huh. Now I can definitely cool. tell this light pink apart from this slightly darker pink. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Your expertise in shades go up a lot. So, yeah, that's super cool. What's the picture of? It's like a sailboat in a tropical place, but it's like a painting. So there's brush oh. strokes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We got one with the girls that genuinely was too hard for us. We were like, this is actually not enjoyable at this point because it was like all of these silvery unicorns, but it was too, it was too, too difficult. Yeah, so, yeah, totally. I was thinking about how I wanted it to be a nice scene that I wanted to look at, which was more 
influencing my puzzle choice than how many pieces it was. So I did get one with a lot of pieces because that was the image I wanted to look at more. So we'll see if it's too many well, pieces. And I wonder, is there a scale? I don't know why I'm going off on this puzzle <laughs> riff, but like, is there a scale of difficulty? Because the number of pieces, like that one That's with a good the point. silver it's unicorns was so hard compared to another one with the same number of pieces. Mm-hmm, that was like sure. more contrast. In. Anyway, so puzzles. Yeah, that's a good point. I love it. So we're talking about hell yeah or no today. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I wanted to just give you a quote from Derek Sivir's book, which is called Hell Yeah or No. And the subtitle is What's Worth Doing. And so this is kind of a summary of what we're talking about here. So if you're not feeling hell yeah, then say no. Most of us have lives filled with mediocrity. We said yes to things we felt half-hearted about. So we're too busy to react when opportunities come our way. We miss out on the great because we're too busy with the mediocre. The solution is to say yes to less. If you're not feeling, hell yeah, that would be awesome, about something, say no. It's an easier decision. Say no to almost everything. This starts to free your time and mind. Then when you find something you're actually excited about, you'll have the space in your life to give it your full attention. You'll be able to take massive action in a way that most people can't because you cleared away your clutter in advance. Saying no makes your yes more powerful. Though it's good to say yes when you're starting out, wanting any opportunity or needing variety, it's bad to say yes when you're overwhelmed, overcommitted, or need to focus. Refuse almost everything. Do almost nothing. But the things you do, do them all the way. Wow. So I highly recommend this book by Derek Sivers, Hell Yeah or No. Um... It's a pretty quick read. He like gets really pithy about his insights, and he has insights on lots of topics from... He has one called When You're Extremely Unmotivated, and another called There Are Always More Than Two Options, and they're all little sections within this Hell Yeah or No book, um, which is super awesome. That's super... I'm, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued. Even what you just said about... I think that's one of the things um, that happens a lot with um, students uh-huh. is that thing of being like, okay, there is more than two choices, but they're always in such, when you're in that desperate mindset, it feels like you only have the, like there only is like whenever someone, what am I trying to say? Somebody told me once, if people tell you there's only two choices, they're wrong. Yeah. And so totally. I think that's always a useful thing to remember. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Okay, so tell us, because you're kind of the one bringing us to this concept. Okay. And you have used it in in the wild, I was about to say, but when I was texting <laughs> you about a crisis and you were like, is this a hell yes? So like you kind of did it, you know, Yeah, I find it really helpful for deciding things. Um, mm-hmm. Just asking that question, you know, something comes up and you're like, oh, should I do this or not? Probably if you're already wondering if you should do it or not, that means it's not a hell yeah. And so... The answer is no. But then this can help decide that no. Um, And part of it, I think, is deciding and not leaving the question hanging, just saying, okay, it's not a hell yes, so it's a hell no, and I'm going to take it off my options list. And then, of course, like he's saying, you have your schedule more clear for the things you do want to do. Can I ask Um, a question about sort of the general thing? Is there room for maybe not having a hell yes because you don't feel like you have permission to or like, you know what I mean? Like, is there something of like, oh, I shouldn't really do this because it's going to inconvenience so and so. But like, I kind of oh. want to do it. Like, is there any? Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, so maybe that's just a separate thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't think Derek Sivers gets into it in this book. And um, he does say he's like seeing all these concepts as an introduction to the concepts. And then we can yeah. go and apply them to our life. So, I mean, I think if you're feeling like you can't say hell yes for some reason but if you were allowed to you would that seems to me like it counts as a hell yes that's my interpretation i love that yeah 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 Um, so imagining if you did have permission and then you still were like meh then yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, i think so i like that so yeah i think it's really helpful for deciding so recently it came up for me an opportunity arose to put in a proposal for a company that needed to assess the environmental impact on the ocean of something they were working on. And that was something that I could maybe do. Um, And it was a good opportunity in terms of possibility for funding. You know, not that many people are putting in proposals, projects for my students to work on, etc. But when I asked myself, is it hell yeah, it wasn't really something I wanted to work on. You know, I mean, it wasn't actually definitely not something. It wasn't even close. Um, so I would have only been doing it because I felt like it was a good opportunity, but it didn't really feel like something I wanted. So anyway, 
Um, plus, there are other things that I'd rather be working on. So it was when I asked that question, it became obvious that it wasn't something I wanted to do. I love this because I think it really um, speaks to like you know, pros and cons lists, Mm -hmm. but like not wanting to do something is a really valid reason to not do it. And I don't feel like we have that enough in how we sort of talk Uh about our careers or Uh like even with students when sometimes they're like making their lists of grad schools and you're like, but would you want to live there? Like, are you equipped to live in the snow for this amount of time or whatever it is? And totally, they are kind of like, oh, like, is that a is that okay? Choice. Can I really decide that? Yeah, totally. Right, or like wanting to be close to your family or like all of those things are completely valid choices. And so I think, yeah, it's so weird sometimes that we just don't. I think the assumption is like there's a very negative deficit based mindset, which is that we're all lazy beings and we'll say no to everything because we don't want to do anything. Right, and but we it's won't. totally not true. Yeah, completely. Yeah. I'm trying to find, because you're making me think of something that Derek also talks about in this book, but I'm having trouble finding it, which is like the three things that um, are valuable. And one of them is happiness, you know? Right. And so if you don't want to do the thing, and it's genuine, you know? I mean, sometimes we don't want to do it because we feel like we don't have permission to, or there's some weird Mm -hmm. fear or something. But if it's just not something we want to do, then that is a valid part, totally. Right. And even from like a sort of mercenary input sort of thought process like if you're not happy about it you're just not Mm -hmm. going to do it and so totally yeah and sometimes not doing it is a sign that you weren't actually happy about it and didn't want to do it you know um i love i wish we could like sort of cast a magic spell that we would all assume um good intentions for ourselves like that Mm -hmm. we have our best like we're not just like being lazy jerks like totally totally yeah ralph had a system with his to-do list for a while that i really liked which is if it got pushed to the next to-do list twice then it was crossed off like obviously yeah, it wasn't not. something that was high enough up on the list to actually do yeah which i thought was cool um the other thing i wanted to mention just about this concept is that we've kind of talked about a similar thing with essentialism which is a book by greg mccohen and also the title of our previous episode um and he has a really similar phrase but his phrase is if it isn't a clear yes then it's a clear no so very similar thought process so it's it's uh lots of places you can read about this helpful yeah way of i love it. About it i love it so what what about you what's working for you with this i think you know i really believe in this mm-hmm. and i really like aspire to having it be like an automatic thing for me cool um, I think at the moment the thing that's kind of working for me is i'm so tired after this year mm-hmm. that i am saying no to things Ooh. so like this nice. summer I feel like I just keep getting like enticing emails about things. I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, "Mm, no, like I really genuinely feel like, like not, you know, terribly like cracking up, but just so tired and kind of borderline burnt out and definitely not bringing, I just, I'm like having the same kind of enthusiasm about what Mm -hmm. I'm doing at the moment, which I hope is temporary and it has sort of come and gone before. So I do kind of sense the urgency in making sure that I actually Mm -hmm. say no to things. So this is really helpful framing like this. You kind of brought this up at a good time because I was sort of like thinking of it kind of from a negative sort of mm-hmm. like by saying no to things. But yeah, so I feel I feel that's kind of working for me at the moment is sort of the mm-hmm. urgency of feeling like, OK, I really need to take a break. So that's that's cool that this unfortunate mindset that you're in is actually really helping you practice saying no and right. only choosing the things that are most exciting. Um that's good that you're getting the practice (laughs) right right totally and I think it's like yeah so it's good and then I think I mean the other sort of positive thing that's working for me is like this is something like this would be if you could imagine your best happiest self it would be Mm -hmm. me practicing this skipping around (laughs) saying no to everything so that would be (laughs) like yeah so I think that would be good so what about for you as usual my working on is a bit longer but um, for you (laughs) what is what do you oh sorry No, it really relates to what you were just saying, which is that um, sometimes I, you know, like, where is the bar for when things are hell yeah? And sometimes I feel like I do say hell yeah to more things than I actually want to do or can do well in a reasonable time frame. But that kind of self-regulates because if I do, if I've already said yes to a bunch of things, then I'm, my hell yeah bar is a little bit higher, you know? And so um, that, that's good. And then if I do find I'm doing more than I want to, 
it's just a good reminder to go back to sticking to that question of hell yeah or no um, a little bit more firmly. So I think it's it's nice. It's like a negative feedback loop where if things sway a little bit too far one direction, it self-regulates and I'm back to thinking about it the right way again. So I think that's another cool attribute of hell yeah or no. Well, it's it's kind of interesting. It reminds me both what you just said in the quote that like sometimes you are sort of fresh off the bench and you're like, hell yeah to everything. And, uh-huh. you know, yeah, and, and that makes sense. You should do that sometimes, mm-hmm. of course. And yeah. sometimes like you said it to me before about I think when we were talking about professional development and like mm-hmm. that, that can ebb and flow. And sometimes you're in this sort of information gathering period of like, yes, to everything. And then, OK, mm-hmm. I need to be more discerning. So I think. That's really cool that you're kind of tying that together. But I think, yeah, I think the rigidity of no, I always have to say no to everything or I always have to say yes is like not going to, it's kind of not, I guess this is the thing with this. It's very flexible to all the other things that are going on. And maybe. Yeah, Yeah, I think, I think it is flexible because you, you need to be saying hell yeah to make it be a yes. And that does depend on what's going on currently in your life and whether you want a new thing or not. Um, but also it depends on how exciting the opportunity is. And so totally. Um, and hopefully you've cleared your schedule enough so that you're ready for the opportunity if it does come. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I feel like um, starting a new job as an assistant professor was a really good time to be saying yes to everything. I agree. And I to agree. kind of like even with like teaching styles and being like, well, all right, I'll give this a try. And like, you know, mm-hmm, that's a really mm-hmm. helpful sort of I, I'm saying identity forming and maybe that's a bit dramatic but it's kind of like you're sort of finding what your thing is yeah well you're you're figuring out your teaching philosophy you're mm-hmm. figuring out what kind of committees you like to be on you're figuring out what works and what doesn't work in your research group so I think it does make more sense to say yes early on in any kind of area um and then hone it down a little bit yeah yeah totally so what are you working on so I think you know I think I wish that my process of saying no could be not related to, okay, I have to say no or I'm going to crack up because I'm so burnt out. Like I would oh, rather yeah. mm-hmm. it was like from a more positive kind of what you're talking about, like which is like bringing more energy to things that mm-hmm. you are excited mm-hmm. about and that sort of thing. Like not, I think it's sort of, you know, I think I'm kind of naturally coming to the end of this period of like, well, all right, to everything, you know, mm-hmm. so that's kind of happening anyway. And maybe that coincides with sort of having done the big tenure process at the moment or whatever. But then doing it just from a place of like, OK, I don't want to burn out mm-hmm. is not where I want to be. Like I want it to right. be more of a positive thing. And so I think it's good to get practice of like, mm-hmm. OK, I said no to this thing. And I'd love to hear from people like I'd love to know how much. Do people, like, is there many things that you, I've never really heard people talk about things they said no to that they regretted. Like, it usually seems like. You're not going to say no to something that you really want to do, probably, most of the time, you know? Right. So this is, uh, that's why this is reminding you to say no to all those things that you don't want to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. And even, like, I mean, it's so, sometimes it's sort of like childish, but like, if someone offers you something. And you're like, no. And then you're like, oh, no, now they're like, they're never going to offer me anything again. Mm -hmm. Or like now I'm going to be on this kind of list of people who didn't take opportunities or whatever. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, the more it happens and you're like, oh, okay, they didn't, you know, like I'm not on the bad list now or whatever, then it's not the end of the world. And so I think practicing it is crucial. I think that's so true. And I think, yeah, the more you say no and realize it hasn't ruined your relationship with whoever you said no to. Yes, um, exactly. The more it seems like an okay thing to do. And then maybe the more you can raise the bar, because it seems to me like the solution to what you're talking about of only doing it to save yourself from being burnt out is to raise the bar on what counts as a hell yeah situation and say no to more things. So that's the solution. How do you get there? Maybe by practicing, which sounds like is what you're doing. Right. And I think, I think you're right. Like, I think by not saying things, not saying yes to things that will literally push me over the edge is not mm-hmm. quite a hell yeah. Like, that's still like, right. Okay, yeah, that would, that's you're just, a, yeah. you're yeah. basically <laughs> saying no to the hell no's, it sounds For, like. Okay, yes, that's a good framing, I think. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah. But yeah, there is, you know, and I think in some ways these books are really interesting because... Mm-hmm. It's kind of modeling, oh, look, those people are saying no to stuff, and they're obviously very successful right, people in their right. lives. And mm-hmm. I think the more we see of that, 
it, the better, you know, that we can mm-hmm. kind of, because, it, you know, especially we often do see more people just taking on more than they can handle and more than they yeah. want to do. And I think and that's not really what we want to emulate. Yeah. No. And I think the more we can be like, oh, Joe really only picks a couple of projects and absolutely throws down when they, you know, mm-hmm. they think that will be really effective. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. I think so, too. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, if you're worried about reputation or something, it seems like you'd have a great reputation if whenever you said yes, you really threw down and did it awesomely. Like, that sounds great. Um And another thing I like about this is just, I often want to be like, oh, I don't know, this is kind of a borderline case, but it can't be a borderline case. If it's not hell yeah, then it's no. So like, if you're like, well, I don't know, it's almost hell yeah. Well, you know, it it seems like it has to be obvious. And if it's not obvious, and if you're questioning it, that means it's no by this phrasing, which is what I find helpful. I have a question. Yeah. I have a question for you. So yes, I totally. And so can you... Like, can you relate any of this to the experience you just had about the grant that you talked about? Where yeah. Is it that sometimes you do need to look at it through different windows? That's a great question. You know, and I think because I was really intrigued and sort of inspired by the process that you had of deciding to not do this grant. Yeah. OK, so let's the, the progression was a year ago. There were there's only an, a couple opportunities to apply for this grant. And one of them was. About a year ago, I could have been writing it, and one of them was right now. And so about a year ago, I was like, okay, no, I'm not ready to do it, but I'll do it next year. And I had decided I would do it, what is now this year. And then, you know, I started working on it. I was still committed to doing it. And then I was like, I don't know if I want to do it because I want to do all these other things instead. And then I decided to do it, and then I decided not to do it. So, yeah, you're right. And I did wonder about this hell yeah or no thing because that is really interesting because as far as that particular grant was, if you just considered the grant in isolation do I want to do this particular grant or not the answer was hell yeah it seemed like a good match for me I was interested in it but then there's another aspect I suppose which is the act of deciding and this is coming back to essentialism where you can't actually do everything so you can't Mm -hmm. be mad at yourself for not doing everything and so I always use the example from essentialism of it's 10 minutes until a meeting is going to start and it's going to take you 10 minutes to get there. So if you sit down to check your email first, you have decided you're going to be late to the meeting. You can't be mad at yourself for being late to the meeting or you decide you're not going to check. Either way is fine, but you actually don't have an option of checking your email and getting to the meeting on time that was never available. Um, So I feel like in this case... I didn't have the option of doing the grant and doing these other things I wanted to do this summer. And the other things I wanted to do this summer were hell Stronger yeah. hell yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so even though they all were in the category, I suppose, in isolation of hell yeah, when put together, it was clear which ones I wanted to do more. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then that became, well, given all that information, the grant is not a hell yeah after all. Yeah, that's super, that's super cool and helpful, I think, to have that like sort of extra nuance yeah too because yeah. it's and you know i think too um as someone who's not that practiced in this but i think it is okay for the hell yeah to not necessarily be a bolt of lightning that hits you right in the forehead like it can be yeah. okay i'm going to think about it in this framework mm-hmm. or can mm-hmm. i like you you know we said like if you if i did have permission to do this would i want mm-hmm. would it be a hell yeah, yeah. Or like what are the things so yeah i think um that's super helpful yeah i think it makes sense that you can ask yourself is this hell yeah from a variety of perspectives or over Mm -hmm. some period of time or something. Um, Yeah. Then again, I'm really glad that I have decided not to do the grant and I'm not continuing the deliberation onward and onward, you know? So that's another good thing about the, about the, the no is very important too, you know, to take it off your plate and decide that it's not happening. Oh, totally. Can you imagine if you dragged it out all summer? Right. Exactly. No. And that'd be, that'd be awful. Right. Yeah, I think um, I think it's I think it's a good thing, for sure. Yeah, me too. All right, here's to here's to our big hell yes. All, all right, on. let's do it. Our hell yes and our no's. Here's to them. Oh, oh yeah, oh, <laughs> thanks, Bye-bye. thanks, Ruth. Thanks so much for joining us on the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. We're delighted to have you as a listener, and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to email us, our address is contactprofessorpodcast at gmail.com. 
We'd love to hear any of your suggestions for future shows or professor quotes that you might want to share with us, or even just things that have come up for you when you were listening to previous episodes. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, we would love if you would spread the word. So the best way to spread word is by telling people you know, if you think they should listen to it, or you can leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.